G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to DCS World with Mags and welcome aboard my favourite module in DCS without a doubt. This is the Huey. Yes, the Bell UH-1H Iroquois, one of the most famous helicopters ever developed. An aircraft so famous and so well known for its distinctive rotor sound that often Hollywood movies will take the sound of a Huey's rotor blades and apply it to every helicopter because people have the feeling that that's what a helicopter should sound like. So what are we up to in the Huey today? Well, why get the weapon systems organized here at the moment? What we are doing today is a convoy assault mission. Now, this is one of the missions that comes standard with the Huey inside of the standard Black Sea map. It's available in the Instant Action tab, and there are actually two versions of it. There is an easy mode and a hard mode. Today's version, we are playing the hard mode. So the layout of this mission is pretty simple. You are flight lead in a two-ship formation of Huey gunships. Both ships in the flight are armed with two sets of rocket pods. They are 2.75 inch or 70 millimeter rocket pods and four M134 miniguns. Two mounted to the flexible mounts just behind the pilot and co-pilot's doors and two being manned by gunners in the back of the Huey itself. Now this configuration is was actually fairly rarely seen amongst US forces. It was most commonly encountered with miniguns mounted on the Ford mounts in Australian bushranger units. Surprisingly few H-series Hueys were actually converted to gunships in US service. The vast majority of them were kept as transport because their extra power gave them vastly better lift capacity. When they were converted to gunships, most of the time those Ford mounted miniguns were actually mounted on the same weapons arms as the rocket pods. Although even more commonly than that, it was usually older model Hueys that were kept in a gunship configuration. So our targets for this mission are two convoys. Now the first convoy is just ahead of us here on the road, just before the town that you see. It consists of a number of transport trucks and a couple of small jeeps escorted by two armoured vehicles. Now these armoured vehicles are incredibly dangerous, they have very accurate guns. We need to eliminate those first, and from that point, taking out the rest of this particular convoy shouldn't be too much of an issue. Now the M134s are powerful enough to crack these armoured vehicles open, however it will require a large amount of sustained fire on them. It's much easier to take them out with the rocket, so I'm going for a rocket pass first. And I have the rocket set to twin fire, so one rocket out of each pod on firing. And the volley is away, I can't see exactly whether or not I hit the target yet, so break right and begin to take altitude, pulling away from the formation, because I know that second armoured vehicle is going to engage. And now I've made the first pass, tell the second ship in the flight to begin its engagement of the targets as well. And you can see the machine gun fire coming off the second armoured vehicle, so I'm going to try and drop in here. Unfortunately the armoured vehicle is right on the corner, and as it turns through I just wasn't able to get the Huey around fast enough, and the rockets run just slightly short. So quickly bug out of the area, I don't want to slow down at this point until that armoured vehicle has been neutralised, otherwise I can take a hell of a lot of fire in a hurry. Now I'm looking for a second pass on the armoured vehicle here, unfortunately because I'm keeping my speed up I just can't quite bank the Huey in fast enough, and I can see him, he's just out of my gun, so quickly pass over, and at this point I'm going to tell my door gunners to open up and begin engagement of the trucks. Now I'm just circling wide here to give my door gunner a chance to start working on the trucks and I have flicked over from the rocket pods over to the guns themselves. I don't want to waste all of the rockets, I'll need some of them on the second convoy. And the door gunner looked like he took one of them out there. Now I flicked over from rockets to guns here and I intend to go direct fire on the target. Now I'm not using the flexible mount, I like to manually control the guns if I can. I can have my co-pilot take control of the flexible mount or jump into the co-pilot seat and take over the flexible mount myself but I kind of like just dead strafing down targets. It's actually incredibly difficult to do, as you can see the Huey bobs and moves and rolls and rocks around a lot as it's flying, so keeping the guns in a fixed position on target is really a good challenge. Now on this pass it looks like the armoured vehicle may have been taken out by the second ship in the flight, so I'm beginning to directly engage the trucks myself. With the two armoured vehicles eliminated, this is relatively safe. I have occasionally had situations where I've taken small arms fire at this point, but it is comparatively rare. The real threat is what you just saw in the background. You would have seen a string of tracer fire going off on the side. That's what makes this particular mission hard mode. This is just the warm-up.
and another solid hit there that's another truck down it looks like we may have two trucks and possibly a jeep remaining at this particular moment now as i'm circling the targets i am starting to keep a look on what is going on up the road in the direction the convoy is heading that's the position of the second convoy. Now the second convoy is significantly more of a problem. It's about the same size as this convoy, but it only has one armoured vehicle to engage, and it's not moving. It's a stationary convoy. It sounds like it would be easier to your account for what has replaced the second escort vehicle. The second escort vehicle is a ZSU-23. That is a quad 23mm radar guided anti-aircraft gun. Basically nightmare given form to a Huey pilot and I'm gonna to have to take that out. A direct burst from that gun is fully capable of completely destroying the Huey from over a kilometre, which is why it's very important that you take out the two armoured vehicles in this particular convoy before it makes its way to the second convoy. If both armoured vehicles are still alive and manage to make it to the second convoy, the combination of three armoured vehicles plus the ZSU or combined are more than capable of preventing you from being able to get close enough to engage the ground targets within the area. And if you try, they will likely shoot you down. So at this point, it looks like the first convoy has been completely cleared, everything is under control. Time to start making our way to the second convoy. Just reselecting rockets there. Now what I want to do is make one pass on the ZSU and take it out with the last of my rockets. I can use the miniguns on the second armored vehicle if I have to, but the ZSU is the highest threat in this particular convoy and must be eliminated first, otherwise it's unlikely that I'll actually complete the mission. So once again, issuing orders to second in flight, I want to make sure that they are engaging the targets as well, hopefully they'll take some of the anti-aircraft fire so I'm able to get in on target, and first tracers are coming past the cockpit, we are lined up on target, rockets away, took a couple of hits there on that pass, we got a couple of bullet holes in the windshield, but nothing major, the ZSU didn't hit us, thankfully I think we managed to take the ZSU out in that pass, so all we've got to worry about now is the armoured vehicle and any small arms fire. And that's the easiest way I've found for taking the ZSU out in this mission. Come in low and fast and hit it as quickly as possible. Take another couple of grazing hits there. And we miss once again, we aim slightly too high there. Continuing to bank through. In all honesty, I probably should have switched over to the guns there and not used the rockets. The last armoured vehicle would be much easier taken out with the rocket load. Unfortunately, I'm down to just two rockets remaining, one in each pod. Now I'm going to try running past down the convoy here and hope my door gunners will engage. Looks like we've got some hits just on the transport trucks, which is fine, we need to take them out anyway. Now at this point I'm going to make another pass on the armoured vehicle, which is starting to get really close with its tracer fire just there. Now I've only got two rockets remaining, so I get one shot. If I miss aim, I'm going to have to take out the armoured vehicle with the M134s. Last rocket's away and they fly slightly high, just missing the last armoured vehicle. So we go into a bank again and I'll flick over to the M134s and we'll see if we can finish this guy off. Now I make a very silly mistake here, I see the door gunner is starting to engage the armoured vehicle so I decide to engage the trucks with the main guns, ignoring the armoured vehicle and unfortunately my crew pays the price for it. We're now in the passenger seat, we are now the co-pilot of the Huey, we just took a massive hit to the right hand side, the right hand door gunner and the pilot is now dead. Now the co-pilot does have access to a flexible sight, but in this situation I tend to just eyeball the guns and it works out in my favour, just run the guns across and we penetrate the top of the armoured vehicle and set it on fire. So that's the armoured vehicle eliminated. Honestly, I should have gone for that first. And this would be the point where, well in normal situations I would back the Huey out. Though it doesn't seem we've taken any structural damage or internal damage to the helo itself. It's just the crew members that have been taken out, so we're still taking small arms fire, so if we strafe through the area, try and take out the last vehicles, and then we'll call this one a day. It does go to show how vulnerable people were in the Huey when they were engaging in combat, however. 
The Huey itself is famous for its ruggedness and how much damage it can take and still sustain flight, but that flight was reliant on the people inside still being capable of flying it. And as you can see, the Huey itself, the pilot, co-pilot and all the crew on board were actually in a really vulnerable situation. This is why I have such great respect for the real world pilots who flew the Huey into the thick of battle during Vietnam. The world has yet to devise a measurement system that has a number large enough to measure the weight of the brass balls of the pilots that flew this thing in combat. And with that last pass we take out the last vehicle, it looks like it was a jeep that was engaging us, and that is the last of the convoy cleared. So with that it's time to turn off and head back to our runway and return home. Now, this particular mission, well it most certainly wasn't flawless. And at that point I was just opening up the guns out of frustration that the pilot and right hand side gunner got taken out. Now, I made some mistakes and that's why they got eliminated. I should have broke wide, turned back in on the armoured vehicle and taken it out first and I probably would have avoided this for the most part. But it is a really good example of how dangerous just the guns on those armoured transports you see on the ground can actually be. And keep in mind that a couple of weeks ago there was actually a nerf to those guns to reduce their accuracy. Why this change most certainly did make this particular mission easier, it was near impossible to complete prior to the change. Slow moving helos like the Huey are still particularly vulnerable to these guns if you do not pay them enough respect. Anyways ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this video and hope you enjoyed this gunship run. Until next time, click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.